It's Thanksgiving, and we all have something to be thankful for, even us libertarians. What am I thankful for? Welcome to The Lava Spurt, the weekly offshoot of The Lava Flow, channeling the flow of information to the libertarian, anarcho-capitalist, voluntarist, and agorist community. Brought to you by my per episode donors. Thank you. Here's your host, Roger Paxton. Thank you for joining me on the 23rd episode of The Lava Spurt, the Libertarian Thanksgiving edition. A bit of personal history. My family can be traced back to three people who traveled to America on the Mayflower including the first European woman to step foot on American soil, Mary Chilton. Interestingly enough, my aunt, who did the genealogy to find all of this out, is married to a man who is part Wampanoag Indian, a descendant of the Indians who were also at the first Thanksgiving dinner. As a matter of a fact, my uncle's brother is a chief of one of the Wampanoag tribes. So Thanksgiving with our family was always a little bit special. But this Thanksgiving, for the second time in a row, I'm going to be 1,500 miles away from that family. While I will miss them, I have much more to be thankful for than at any time in my life. First, I get to spend the rest of my life with the very best partner and mother to my children that I could ever ask for. I'm very fortunate to be married to someone who loves liberty as much as I do, so much that she pushed me to make this journey to New Hampshire, and we couldn't be happier here. I'm also thankful for my wonderful, gifted, and beautiful boys. They are my joy and my life. And watching them grow into young men has been one of the most incredible experiences of my life. I'm thankful for the rest of my family as well, my parents who will always have my back, even when they think I've moved their grandchildren away from them to join some cult. But you know, I'm thankful for so much more, much more beyond just my family. I'm thankful for the Free State Project, which brought thousands of libertarians together in one place to work for liberty in our lifetimes. I'm also thankful for my new intentional family here in New Hampshire, a group of like-minded individuals who all have the same base moral code. I've met and become friends with some of the most incredible people that you could imagine in the year that I've been here in New Hampshire. I couldn't imagine not having these people in my life now. But I'm also very thankful for you, the listeners of this show. You guys have helped me take what started off as a tiny podcast two years ago and taken it to heights that I never thought it would achieve. Your sharing and commenting and reviewing and talking about this show has made all the difference. And I can't thank you enough. I'm also very thankful for my supporters. I couldn't, or should I say wouldn't, do this without you guys. You make it financially worthwhile to take a bit of time every week for my family and my leisure time, which I enjoy very much, to bring you this content. Thank you guys so much. But in this time of crazy politics and eroding freedoms in most areas of our lives, what do libertarians in general have to be thankful for? Here's a few things. Number one, more and more people are becoming sick and tired of the way things are going in this country and in the world. We had the lowest voter turnout in 20 years, and more votes cast for third parties than we've had in the same period. More people are awakened to peaceful secession than ever before, with movements popping up in many states around the country. Number two, technology is slowly making the government more and more ineffective. From Bitcoin to 3D printers, from the internet to phone apps, As technology becomes more prevalent in people's lives, they will see how little they actually need government to take care of them from cradle to grave. Number three, there are more of us now than ever. Ignoring the fact that the word libertarian has become a buzzword that has lost most of its meaning, the numbers of people who are actually libertarian in the strictest definition are actually growing. You know, I was having a conversation with a friend of mine the other day who's been a hardcore libertarian for damn near 40 years, and she was telling me that in the 70s there were thousands of libertarians around the country, and now there's tens of thousands or maybe even hundreds of thousands. We definitely live in a time that it's a great time to be a libertarian. Number four, libertarians have places to escape now. Instead of having to be so spread out and so far away from other libertarians and so ineffective because of it, 
there are places that libertarians are congregating to have fellowship and to have a collective impact on liberty. The Free State Project is here in New Hampshire, and Liberland is working hard to have it happen there as well. There are also other groups in the U.S., like the Blue Ridge Liberation Project, and ideas like seasteading that may pop up any day. Number five, homeschooling is becoming more acceptable and more prolific all over the place. I truly believe that the best way to achieve liberty for the future is to get kids out of government indoctrination centers. As homeschooling becomes less kooky and more mainstream, kids will be less and less indoctrinated to authority and to the state. This is only good for everybody. Number six, let's not forget to be thankful that our communistic pilgrim forefathers saw the errors of their ways and instituted a free market solution to bring them from the brink of despair. Who knows how different our history would be had the pilgrims continued their socialism until they were all dead. The population the last winter of socialism in the New World started at 500 and fell to 60 before the end of the winter because many refused to work for everyone else's benefit. That's when William Bradford abolished socialism and allowed every man to have his own land and grow his own food for his own family. This is when the pilgrims thrived, thanks to the free market. And number seven, we can most be thankful that Bill Weld is fucking gone with his tail between his legs. Fuck that guy in the neck. So from me and mine, to you and yours, have a very, very happy Thanksgiving. Until next time, keep striking the root. Thank you for listening to The Lava Flow at thelavaflow.com. Don't miss an episode. Subscribe now at thelavaflow.com forward slash subscribe. This has been a Pax Libertas Productions podcast.